The countdown is on for the country's best tech experts to build defences against a new wave of quantum computers. Imagine someone quietly copying every locked file on the internet today. Your passwords, bank logins, medical records, secret research, private chats. Even though they can't open a single one yet, they aren't stupid. They're patient and very confident. They're betting that in 10 or 20 years, a powerful quantum computer will arrive and crack those locks in minutes. This slow motion heist already has a name. Store now. Decrypt later. In this video, we'll see how today's encryption works, why quantum computers threaten it, and how new ideas in math might keep your data safe for you and everyone. The slow quantum threat. Right now, governments and skilled hackers are quietly copying encrypted data they cannot read. They grab password databases, bank traffic, medical files, industrial research, and even classified state secrets, then stash them away on huge servers. This strategy has a simple logic. Even if today's computers cannot break the codes, tomorrow's might. If a quantum computer one day cracks the math behind our public key systems, all that stored data can be unlocked in bulk. This plan even has a name, store now, decrypt later. It works disturbingly well because some information keeps its value for years. A stolen movie file does not matter in 10 years, but long-term trade secrets, blackmail material, or intelligence reports absolutely do. Security agencies know this. The US National Security Agency has openly warned that a large enough quantum computer could undermine all widely used public key algorithms. Lawmakers have reacted too. In the United States, new rules already push government agencies to start migrating toward post-quantum cryptography, even though the threatening machines do not exist yet. They are racing a clock whose end date nobody can write down with certainty. That uncertainty is exactly what makes this moment so tense and so important, really. From shared secrets to RSA. To understand why quantum computers are so dangerous, we first need to see how modern encryption evolved. For most of history, secure communication meant sharing a secret key in person. Two people would meet, agree on a code, then go home and send messages that only that shared key could unlock. This is called symmetric encryption. It is simple and powerful, but it has one huge flaw. You have to somehow deliver the key safely before you can talk safely. In a world of global networks, that is painful. You cannot realistically meet every website or bank in person to exchange keys. In the 1970s, three researchers, Rivest, Shamir, and Adelman, had a radical idea. What if you could publish a lock that anyone could use, but only you could open? Their answer became RSA, the most famous public key system. Each user secretly picks two enormous prime numbers, multiplies them together, and publishes the product as their public key. Anyone can use that public number to scramble a message to them, but only the person who knows the original primes can easily unscramble it. The safety comes from one brutal fact. Given just the product, finding the two primes again is painfully hard. What makes quantum computers different? On a normal computer, everything is built from bits that are either zero or one. With two bits, you can store four possible states, but only one at a time. With three bits, you can store eight. Again, only one at a time. Every calculation moves through these states step by step. Quantum computers replace bits with qubits. A qubit can be zero, one, or a mixture of both at once, a state called superposition. Two qubits can be in a blend of four states at once. Three qubits can span eight. 20 qubits can represent over a million possibilities at once. In principle, a quantum computer can process all those possibilities together in a single operation. That sounds like free infinite speed, but there is a nasty catch. When you finally measure your qubits, the rich superposition collapses to one single outcome, chosen randomly, but with certain probabilities. Most of the information just vanishes. To gain an advantage, you need clever algorithms that steer the quantum state so that good answers are much more likely to appear when you measure. For many tasks, we have no such tricks. 
Quantum computers are not common magic machines. They are very powerful only for certain carefully structured problems. Real devices add even more restrictions. Qubits are sensitive to heat, vibration, and stray electromagnetic fields. Their fragile quantum state decays in microseconds or milliseconds. To do anything useful, engineers must correct errors faster than they appear, which is why building larger, more reliable quantum processors is such a huge challenge. Magic numbers and periods. One of those special problems is the heart of RSA. Given a large number n that is the product of two primes p and q, we want to find p and q. Classically, this is slow, but there is a strange number pattern that helps. Pick a number g that does not share factors with n. Multiply g by itself again and again, and each time divide by n and keep only the remainder. At first, the remainders seem random. Yet, after a while, something magical happens. You hit a remainder of 1. Keep going, and you will see the same remainders appear again in the same order. The sequence repeats with some period r. In a small example where n is 77 and g is 8, that period turns out to be 10. The key insight is that this period can be used to uncover the hidden primes. If r is even, you can build two new numbers from g raised to r over 2, one slightly bigger and one slightly smaller. Those numbers are very likely to share non-trivial factors with n. With Euclid's algorithm, a simple method for finding common divisors, you can then peel out p and q, Shaw's algorithm in action. Peter Shaw realized that this strange period finding game is exactly the kind of structured problem quantum computers love. Instead of trying exponents one by one, a quantum computer can explore many exponents at once. First, it prepares a huge superposition of possible exponents in one register of qubits. For each of those exponents, it computes g to that power, modulo n, and stores the remainder in a second register, linking the two by quantum entanglement. If you measured everything now, you would learn almost nothing. But if you cleverly measure only the remainder, the state collapses to a superposition of all exponents that give that same remainder. Those exponents are evenly spaced by the unknown period OR. Now the state is periodic, and that is where the quantum Fourier transform comes in. Apply this transform, and the peaks of probability move to values related to 1 over R. A single final measurement now gives you a number that almost encodes the period. With some classical post-processing, you recover ER, build the helpful numbers, and use Euclid's algorithm to reveal the prime factors. In theory, a few thousand perfect qubits would be enough to shatter standard RSA keys. In practice, today's qubits are noisy and fragile, so we need many extra physical qubits to protect each logical qubit. Early estimates said we might need a billion physical qubits to break encryption. Newer research has pushed that down to tens of millions, but that is still far beyond current machines, which have only hundreds, or at best, a few thousand qubits. Even so, progress is steady enough that security experts assume Shaw's algorithm will be practical within the lifetime of data being collected right now. Lattices and a quantum safe future. Because this threat has been known for years, cryptographers have been busy designing new systems that stay safe even against powerful quantum computers. In 2016, the US National Institute of Standards and Technology began a global competition to choose post-quantum standards. Many leading candidates are built on lattice math. You can picture a lattice in two dimensions as a regular grid of points formed by taking integer steps along two basis vectors. Give someone a nice short pair of vectors, and it is easy for them to walk to any lattice point they need. Give them a pair of long skewed vectors that describe the same grid, and suddenly simple tasks become difficult. One especially difficult problem is the closest vector problem. You are given a target point and the rough lattice, and you must find the lattice point nearest the target. In two or three dimensions, a computer can check enough possibilities. But modern schemes use lattices in hundreds or thousands of dimensions. Taking one helpful step along a single axis can push you off target in hundreds of others. Unless you secretly know a good basis, the search explodes in complexity. So, new public keys reveal a messy description of a high-dimensional lattice, 
while the owner keeps a clean description private. Messages are encoded as lattice points, plus a little noise. With the secret key, decoding is fast. Without it, even quantum computers appear to struggle. Behind the scenes, thousands of researchers are stress testing these schemes so that if and when large quantum computers arrive, our private lives can stay private. Quantum computers and AI tools won't magically break the world, but they do force us to rethink how we protect what matters. The same human creativity that built RSA is now building quantum safe codes, new hardware, and better ways to teach these ideas. You don't need a PhD to follow along. Step by step, anyone can build intuition for qubits, encryption, and lattices, just like we did here. Stay curious, ask how systems work, and upgrade your knowledge the way we upgrade our security. Thanks for watching, and keep your future self protected with smart choices made today, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow.